Welcome to Excel and Finance video number 105. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 11, click on the link directly below the video and scroll all the way down to the Finance Excel class section. Hey, yeah, uh, this video we're going to talk about expected returns and standard deviation for our portfolio of stock. Last video, we saw how to calculate expected return, which is our average when making estimates for the future, and standard deviation for individual stock. And in that video, we calculated here's stock A. Here's stock B. And in the last video, we took each individual estimated return times the probability and added them. Ah, but in this video, since we're going to do the return, expected return for the portfolio, we're going to have to calculate a um, total return we expect for each state of the economy. So like this. And then we can uh, calculate our expected return from that and our standard deviation for the portfolio. Ah, but first, if we have two stocks, A and B, we need to know how much we have invested in each. We need to know what weight uh, for the whole portfolio is A and what weight is B. So we're simply going to take this amount divided by the total and this amount divided by the total. And that'll, that'll give us our weights. I'm going to say equal that amount for A divided by, and now I don't have the total in the cell, so I'll just use the sum function, highlight both, and hit F4 to lock. That way I can copy this to the side, and it will give me the weight. So 40% invested in that, and 60 in that. Now, for this particular state right here, we're not going to use the probability because we're estimating for the state. We're saying, hey, if it does, if it is a recession, what's the return for the portfolio? So in this case, we say the amount, the estimated return for stock A times the weight plus the return here times the weight. All right, and now when I copy this formula down, I need these two. Uh, cell references to copy down, but these need to be locked. So I'm going to hit the F4 key there. Click on this cursor right there and F4 to lock that one. Control Enter. And now I can copy this down. Now we have our estimated return for each particular uh, state. Now we can multiply these times the probability to, to get the expected return for the portfolio. And then we'll also use these in our standard deviation calculation. So now, over here, we could do it the long way, right? Equals this times this plus this times this plus this times this. And you know, that is how it's done. But notice, there's a column of values here, column of values here. They're exactly the same dimension, which means there's three rows in one column. So we can use the, the sum product. So I'm going to click Escape equals sum product. It's made for exactly this. Array 1 is broop, the first items uh, to multiply and then add. Remember, product means multiply, sum means add. They name this function nicely. And then I take uh, the returns for estimated return for the portfolio if the state occurs. And there's my expected return for the portfolio. Now we need to calculate the standard deviation. Now similar to last video, it's the same concept except for instead of the individual stock amount calculating the standard deviation for the individual stock, we're doing it for the portfolio. So we have to calculate deviation first. And that's always the, ac the actual value minus the average or the expected value. And that one needs to be locked. That's the deviation. That tells us how far each individual item is from the average. Then for our standard deviation calculation, we take the deviation and square it. Now we want, uh, inst instead of adding these all up and dividing by the count, we're doing uh, we have probabilities here, which are, in essence, weights, a weighted uh, type of weighted average. So I say this times the probability. Now, that formula will work all the way down. Control Enter and drag it down. Now, when you add these all up, and I neglected to mention this in the last video, it's called variance. Now, really, standard deviation is the one used most often. So I kind of usually just skip over that. I say add them all up, even though it's called variance. Really. You're adding up 
a bunch of values that have been squared, so it's not in the original unit. So it's always, once you add it up, you have to get it back down to the same unit, so you take the square root. Square root function, xqrt. And there we have our standard deviation for the portfolio. Now, for this class, that is pretty much how you want to do it. I am going to show you uh, two formulas where you can do all these calculations in uh, two single cell formulas, not required for this class, but anyone else watching is interested. Hey, I'm going to take the uh, sum product for expected return. Now remember what we did here is we took this column, uh, this column times each one of these weights and then ultimately down here multiplied it by this, but actually watch this. The, if you know how to do mixed cell references, um, this is the best way to understand how this formula will work and it's quite amazing. Uh, let's go ahead and highlight all these and we want to multiply this times this and, th and that result times that. And if we could have a single cell formula we could copy down and over, it would be like this. Equals this, relative cell reference all the way through the range, times this. Now this one needs to be locked going to the side, but not down. So we hit the F4 key one, two, three times, times, and then this one. This needs to be locked when we go down. This whole column needs to be locked, but when we copy the formula from here over to here, it needs to move to this next weight. So I lock the row reference by hitting F4 twice. Now Control Enter will populate all those cells. And if I add this all up, we get our expected return. Now that series of calculations. Now you can see there's kind of a three different arrays here. There's a range of cells that's three rows by two columns, and then another one we're multiplying that's one column by three rows, and another one that's two columns by one row. Well, wouldn't you know it, you can actually just use some product. Now, some product will not allow you to separate these three different uh, arrays with commas because they have to be the same dimensions, but no problem. You can simply multiply that times this, and guess what? You can do it in any order, and it works just fine. That formula right there will work just fine. Now, if you ever were to have numbers here like that, like maybe you had no for no return, right, then none of the formulas would work. But with that, that caveat aside, I'm going to control Z, that is just an awesome formula. Now, standard deviation in a single cell gets a little bit more complicated, but let's think about what we did. We first did this calculation, and if there's somehow, if we look at this as we go down, it looks like this whole column times that, and this whole column times that. So we can certainly simulate these vertically uh, aligned values inside of um, our formula. Let's look over here. We then, from each one of these, uh, squared it, I'm sorry, subtracted this. Well, if we're going to do it in this cell right here, we can just tell it to look there. We square it, and then look what happens to this one as we go down. See this this cell uh, range keeps changing, which means ultimately we then multiply the result times this column. So we can do this whole formula in one cell. Now I'm going to do this one first, and then we'll just put uh, square root on the outside, some product. And we're going to need to square it, so I'm going to open parentheses. And now I'm going to simulate this column. This times this plus this column times this. And now I'm going to highlight this and hit the F9 key to evaluate and just see if we get the same thing as this. Sure enough, we get exactly that. Control Z to undo it. Now we need to subtract from it the expected value. Each one of these gets subtracted the expected value, so I'm going to minus this. And that'll work just fine because the order of operations will multiply first, and this addition will be do done first, so no problem. We can just subtract it. We are going to have to close parentheses there and caret 2. And we don't have values to compare to yet, but we can. Um, just multiply times this probability, and we should get exactly these values right here. So I'm going to highlight all of this, including that parenthesis there, and hit F9. And sure enough, boom, 
we get exactly those values there. Control Z. And now I'm going to close parentheses on the sum product. And that adds them to get this. And now we just add a square root around that. Now I do have <coughs> another video at YouTube I made a number of years ago about how to do this. Um, and if you don't mind doing multiplication inside a sum product, this formula is just <laughs> awesome. A little bit simpler than that uh, other one I did a couple years back. Boom. All right, uh, expected return and standard deviation for a portfolio of stocks, given just two stocks and uh, some estimates for states of the economy. Uh, all right, we'll see you next video.